Eat this shit up. With the recent emergence of screw music in the form of what's being called the discourteous name, slowed and reverb, has made us think about if DJ Screw was still alive, where would he be? How big would screw music have gotten? And would he really have accomplished the goal of screwing the world? If Screw was still here, what do you think? Not only the screwed up click would be, but what do you think DJ Screw would be? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, ain't no telling, you know. <clears throat> uh, from, from where, you know, where it went and how it is now. With him here, is, uh, ain't no telling. Uh, where would the click be? I don't know. One thing, see, there's a lot of few things people don't really know. Screw didn't really want to do no. He like doing what he did. A mixtape DJ. That's what he like to do. And break artists and put them on. That's what he liked to, that's what he wanted to do. So he wouldn't have had no probably no big label or nothing. I don't think he would have. He just probably would have been doing what he do. That's what he loved to do. That's why he was so it just did what it did, cause all that was passion driven. Mm-hmm. That was just something that he wanted to do, and, and it, it formed into niggas being able to eat off of it. And the shit kind of came out of nowhere and, almost. Huh? Yeah. yeah. DJ Screw died in the year 2000, the same year that Lil Flip dropped the Leprechaun. Big Mo released the City of Serb. Big Hawk debuted with Underhawk's Wings and, and the Fat Rap with the Cheese by Lil O hit the streets. 2000 was a powerful year for the screwed up click, and Quiet as It's Kept was a real coming out party for the artists associated with the click who were really just dudes in the hood that found a way to make money off of rap. We went from shortstop to screw. Yeah, and from screw to what you see today. You know what I'm saying? So it all happened organically, man. We was never like, you know, man, somebody gonna be a big, big artist in the game. It's just stuff we like to do. Yeah. You know? Turned the passion into a, a job. Like, like when we were doing it, we didn't know that this was supposed to be this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, sometimes. It really wasn't no business plans. Or... Man, we, that, that's the whole thing. Like, like I said, we just niggas, man, just street niggas, man. So, we wasn't music savvy as far as the business of it, man. We, yeah, y'all just was. It was just like, time. it went from, man, you mean tell me. <laughs> so I can get, I can get a check for this year, <laughs> and I just came legit, to freestyle. You know, legit money too. You know, and hey, you know, it just a whole different thing, man. So we hustling, and rapping was just something I was doing while I was cutting crack. When I got to school house, it was kind of yeah. like it was kind of like uh, I didn't want to say maybe because now these the people that we be listening to when we doing what we do. Right. You know, you got, you know, uh about a, about a, about a, about a, you know, about a, about a misfortune of how things happen in life. I'm getting over there right as Pat is dead. You know what I'm saying? So you got Pat dead, Mafio still over there. You know, when I got there, Mafio was getting ready to die in a, like a couple of months. Like Def was at an amazing rate, you know, BG Gator off of uh, Botany, from the Botany Boy BGs. And it was like, but when I got there, you know, okay, Pat gone, we got everybody else. And did, that, did that help you? Did that get some fuel to the fire? Nah, I mean, to like to, to it feel made, a it boy. made you nervous to rap. Right. Because now it's like, okay, the, the stuff we've been doing on the block, we've been doing over these people. And then, you know, and then certain songs come on like Poker Cud, and you know I stay hyper, had my shell fiber, flipping in my viper, I had laid pipe. Like, you like, I'm finna rap behind this nigga. Man, my throat hurt today. I don't really want to say that too much. It was a real platform. Almost all of the artists in the screwed up clique were signed to different labels. 
DJ Screw created a real platform for these artists to land deals to distribute their albums. That was the strongest attribute of the screwed up click. DJ Screw stayed in his lane. So after taking that into consideration, think about the direction of the movement. I cannot stress enough how big the movement was. We have real screw heads in the child hall that will be in the comments that lived through the era of the screwed up click and how huge the movement was not only in Houston, but in the entire South. People tend to only associate the movement of screw with Houston, which in some instances rightfully so, but it's diluting the impact. The truth is that during the 90s, screw music was a theme that was drastically growing across the South. The big labels in Louisiana, which were cash money and no limit, that were in the same era that were growing right alongside our movement here, knew about the screw music. They knew about the movement. Keep in mind that the beginning phases of digital audio via Napster was created in 1999. So a year later after DJ Screw's passing, the music that was being shared was all from his archives of previously released or recorded music. Meaning that Screw didn't get a chance to really thrive in the digital audio space. But let's go back to the movement, because that's what's the most important part of his legacy. I would like to believe, had Screw lived longer, based on the direction of the screwed up click, artists getting major deals and blowing up the brand, the market that Screw was creating, that when national artists came to Houston, they would go by the Screw shop and drop a tape. Just to be part of the movement, just to experience the experience of nothing else. Serb culture already has taken over the rap game, so ask yourself, if they really wanted to live, quote unquote, that life, why wouldn't the real ones come get the real experience? To me, it only makes sense. It was a whole market that he had cornered. He was dominating. Swisher House was contributing to the sound, but Screw was the originator, the godfather of the sound, if you would. Imagine in the early 2000s hearing Lil Wayne actually rapping on a Screw tape. Or better yet, when Pimp C came home from prison, coming through and hopping on Screw tapes. Obviously, everything happens for a reason. And without Screw passing along with all the others we lost along the way, we wouldn't have the culture that we have today. So in some eerie way, it had to happen the way that it did. And we could never question God's work. But DJ Screw was, as D. Gotti put it, a prodigy. By definition, which is a person, especially a young one, and died with exceptional qualities or abilities. And that he was. So Screw, over at Child Time TV, will never stop showing you love, repping your name. Showing gratitude for the culture that you created and the lives that you touched and changed through your hands and your mind. It's going to always be screwed up click for life over here. It's Hype South with Child Time TV. Until next time, peace. <laughs>